Before we get into this video, I just want to give a mild trigger warning. We will be discussing about transphobia, homophobia, about depression too, and some other a bit more controversial topics. We will be discussing some politics here, so, um, you know, just be aware of that. Hi guys, so I made an album. It's called Don't Mind Me, I Must Speak My Mind. It's kind of a rap, rock, hip-hop, uh, alternative rock punk uh, pop punk uh, album by me i made it it's my record it's out now you can go stream it and the major streaming platforms if you like before going to this record i just want you to know that you're not supposed to take the record too seriously the name of the record is literally telling you, don't mind me, I'ma speak my mind. There's no track called that, it's just me literally saying, please don't mind it, this is just my opinion, and this was just made for fun. It's not supposed to be taken too seriously. I mean, come on, look at the track list. A lot of the songs have really, like, fucking, in your face, clickbaity titles, and, like, about half of the songs are were made as jokes. They are not supposed to be taken too seriously. Uh, surely there are some themes and topics that I do discuss about that are um, actually genuinely important and should be discussed about, but a lot of times the way I present it is through humor and exaggeration. So yeah, it's not supposed to be taken too seriously. So any of you who comment this type shit realize that you've kind of fallen into my trap. Um, Eagles and Catboys and Toxic Femininity both are made as jokes and they are basically done just to get a reaction out of you. So fuck you. Technically this is, album is told, the story of the album, if you can call it that, is done in the sets of three. Like, there's the first three songs. It's like introduction to the album and it's like, you know, kind of quirky, kind of, kind of like over the top, ridiculous, bad, like, purposely. Then there's the second part where it gets a bit more personal. Still has that kind of, like, quirky, um, don't take this too seriously type, like, vibe. Then there's the part three where it gets, like, really mad and angry and like, very in your face. Then there are the last two songs that, like, get, like, serious and, like, close off the whole thing. You know, this is the kind of the point where I would recommend you to uh, pause the video, go listen to the album, and come back. After this, I will be discussing the history of the album, and breaking down all the songs, and I would like you to experience the whole thing first, and then come back, and also possibly uh, share it with your friends to laugh at it, or uh, something like that. I don't fucking care. Just, you know, go listen to the album, come back. I don't fuck with So so for those who don't know, I did release another album in the beginning of this year. It was called When the Machines Fall. In fact, there's a painting that is called exactly that. It features the character that was on the uh, cover of the album. I made that album. It was quite shit. Just like this one, but a lot more shit in my opinion. Um, the mixes were bad. There were some, like, cool musical ideas that I do still like, and I would like to expand upon, and I feel like it is a record that I could make better. And who knows, maybe one day I will release the final cuts of- final version of When the Machines Fall, but at the moment it's not a thing anymore, it's not on the internet, um, you cannot check it out. Uh, <laughs> The reason why I deleted it is that, like, well, as I said earlier, it, the mixes were, were not that great, the songs were not that great, the lyricism was kind of bad, and the overall vibe was kind of, like, like, I like the or overall vibe, but it was very repetitive, in a sense. So, I decided to delete it. Boohoo. Yeah, there were some... What the... So I made that record, I deleted it, it was shit, boohoo. Um, then I started working on another um, <laughs> album called um, 
the good old fashioned old school mixtape, which was supposed to be this kind of jokish um, hip hop record slash a mixtape with this like old school kind of like vinyl aesthetic and like, you know, you know, with like th these like epic like bass grooves and like um, hip hop like drums and all that type shit. And it never came to be. I kept on running into problems with like the harmonies that I was I was trying to make. Um, I don't know how to mix necessarily. I just like twist the knobs and try to find some things that could possibly work. But I am not good at mixing at all, so uh, I don't know what the fuck am I doing. Uh, a lot of times they just didn't work. The songs didn't work, so I decided to scrap that and start a new project. And originally it was supposed to be like two or three songs, like at one point it was four. You know, originally I was thinking of um, the name uh, MIDI Bass Punk Project, but then I changed it into Don't Mind Me Must Speak My Mind. I don't know where did that came come from, I just like decided to do that. Don't Mind Me Must Speak My Mind has gone through a shit ton of changes. I worked on uh, Don't Mind Me Must Speak My Mind since May 2021. And I finally got it done around October of 2021. It still had some changes that I did throw in there here and there, but like it was like the track list and everything was like fully fleshed out at around the October of this year. That's just like, you know, I released the whole first single, Toxic Femininity, and I got the reactions that I was expecting it to have. Um, then I kept on working on the second re second single, um, but then I kind of like got lazy and did not finish the music video on time. So yeah, that's why it came out quite recently and it's not on, on Spotify yet as I'm still speaking. Same thing with Fuck You America. I am actually quite proud of the fact that like I made, I managed to make like two full on music videos for two, two of the songs and one like where I'm just basically just standing up and like rapping the and spitting the bars like a fucking rapper and called that a music video that's not a music video necessarily but fuck it but you know um don't mind me must speak my mind has had a shit ton of changes throughout its, its history with like the whole track list as I said earlier it was all firstly su first supposed to be only like two or three songs then it became like five, then it was like seven, then it was like, uh, at one point it was over 15 tracks that I was like, um, thinking of like throwing in and then I like kind of toned it down and now it's 11 tracks. So, you know, but that brings us to today because we're done with all that, that kind of like production history with like all the fucking things. Why do I keep on swearing? Setting that aside, um, let's move on to breaking down the whole album and talking about the songs. AJ hates on a kill streak! Toxic Femininity was like, again, as I said, it was originally from like the other project that, were, that I was working on called Good Old Fashioned Old School Mixtape. Like this song was literally made by playing around with the sounds and, and at one point I was like, hey, that sounds, that sounds like an epic riff that I could throw in and then like, I don't know, like, does it really, can you really hear it? But I took a lot of inspiration from like Rage Against the Machine type like music. I don't know where the idea for like talking about feminism and like be taking a stance in a sense by saying that yes, I am a feminist, I believe in equality, and I believe that everybody should be equal and you know all that. But at the same time, saying that it's fucking stupid to say that a woman should be the majority and not men. That is very fucking close-minded perspective on the whole thing, and it's not feminism, it's just you wanting to be better than someone else, and it's, no, no, that's not how it's supposed to work. Um, if you want equality, everybody should be equal, not that women are better than men, and not that men are better than, better than women. 
I'm also commenting on the fact that like toxic masculinity is stupid, it's shit, and it shouldn't be a thing. Also, for the music video, I had this idea of like, you know, I'm gonna play a very fucking macho man, and then a very like, um, and very like feminine person, and just like play with the kind of like stereotype and all that. And you know, again, as I said earlier, I'm quite, I'm quite proud of myself that I made the music video, and it's out, and people can see it, and you know, that video kind of like, <laughs> it just like kind of also made me realize that I like, I really do like cross-dressing, um, so. <laughs> E-Girls and Cat Boys. Second track, E-Girls and Cat Boys. Again, you've fallen into my trap if you think that I'm being serious, because that song literally also was fairly quickly made. It is a shit song. That is absolutely shit. The lyricism is, <laughs> it's like purposely fucking bad, and like, and I can't emphasize this enough. It is a shit song. Again, you've kind of fallen into my trap because, y by just like clicking on the video, listening to it, and then commenting shit like, "Oh my god, this song is shit. This song's super gay. Fuck." It is a shit song. I know. I am very self-aware of that. It was done on purpose. Again, look at the fucking track list of the album. It is full of songs with like very clickbaity titles made to get reactions out of people. A lot of the song album is actually a joke. It is not supposed to be taken too seriously. And this song should make it super obvious that you're not supposed to take the album too seriously. Don't take me too seriously because I don't even take myself too seriously. I'm not a serious person. Originally, they were, there was supposed to be a kind of a trap beat behind the like the guitars and shit, but I couldn't like I was too lazy, so I was like looking for like trap like drum samples, and none of none of them really worked with like the guitar. So I decided to like f say like fuck it, let's do this by myself, and I made the drums, and I decided I was like hmm, it's missing something. I'm gonna throw a synth, like, electronic piano in the background and see, does it work? And I was like, holy shit, it actually works! Then the harmonies and all that that I did, I tried as hard as I could to sing. I'm not good at singing. Also, there's some pitch correction here and there, and you can, you can kind of hear it. But, you know, I am not a singer. I can use my voice if I want to, but, like, I am not. And I like singing, in a sense, but I am not a quote-unquote good singer so you know the reason why I decided to make a song called Eagles and Cat Boys is because like you know if you're into like al alternative music in any way uh, you know that Wilbur Soot has done his like whole like insult trilogy there's that one corp song called Eagles are ruining my life and you know I it seems like there's this trend with like songs about ego e-girls and like all that so I decided I decided to do that and throw my own spin around it and see what I can do. And, you know, again, it's a fairly quickly made song. It's a shit song. It is purposely shit. Three 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 is basically me. Haha, uh -huh, that rhymed. Three 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 is basically me just saying the name of the album. Don't mind me, I'm gonna speak my mind. It's whole purpose is to be like, yeah, I'm gonna be saying some shit, I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna be like joking around, I'm gonna be doing all this, all this shit that I've been like preaching about since the beginning of this fucking video. Um, don't mind it, it's just me being quirky and funny and all that. <laughs> this was a weird thing, weird song, because I was just like, I wanna, like, have a song called 333, I don't know what, what it will be, haha, <laughs> that rhymed again, <laughs> but, like, I wanna make a song called 333. I took this, like, very, like, deep, like, 808 bass and threw it, like, a, like, a, one of the drum sets on Ableton again, behind it, and then I just played with the piano, came up with a melody, and then I was just like, hey, this sounds groovy. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so now we're getting into a bit more personal territory with the song I Don't Fuck With Your Vibe. Now, yes, this tonally the song is very like kind of upbeat. It has that kind of, uh, I guess, post-punk kind of 80s type like vibe. It's like very upbeat. It's like kind of funny. There's the whole like, like auto-tuned ad-libs. And like, there's, in the end, there's me like screaming, like doing that <laughs> type like metal growl. Again, it's not like too, too serious of a song, but it's still uh, about kind of a uh, personal topic. It is about a guy that I used to, I used to be fr friends with. And as of right now, I've had to block him twice on Instagram. The first time for calling me a faggot, the second time for impersonating a label and trying to like scam me and or whatever the fuck was his goal. I forgot to mention about 333, but in the song of three in the song 333, I come out. Um I am not straight. I am not a man. I'm actually non-binary. So I made this I made the mistake of coming out with this person. They ended up being very fucking homophobic. As I mentioned earlier, they ended up calling me a faggot. They started distancing themselves from me. They um, even said that like he doesn't like if I even accidentally touch, touch him because he thinks that I'll get ideas from that. Like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Just a shitty, like, thing to do. And the worst part is that like I once considered them to be my friend and I thought I could tell them everything and I thought they would be there and support me but um, what ended up happening that every time I tried to talk about about the shit that is going in my head they were like y well you're such a pussy like w why do you make so big of a deal out of this shit like like everybody goes through that type shit and this is like just now and what the song literally is is just like me saying i don't fuck with your vibe i don't like you leave me the fuck alone and this is and i don't know are you watching this i don't care i'm not gonna name drop you but fuck you seriously leave me the fuck alone I want nothing to do with you. This next song has a re purposely ridiculously long title, so I'm just gonna read it once and just if I need to mention it again, I'm just gonna cut back to it. The next song that we will be talking about is Unpacking My Emotions While That One Depressing Song Was Playing In The Background. Now, you don't have to be too bright to understand what this song is about. It is about depression and unpacking emotions while that one depressing song was playing in the background. Cause, you know, uh, fucking voice cracks. Cause, you know, what would be an album by me without a little bit of depression? Uh, <laughs> the idea for this track was just like, to make a kind of an upbeat song with firstly like very ridiculously long title, but also like, with like very depressing lyrics or not like very depressing lyrics but like depressing lyrics if you get what i mean yeah you know this is this was the end result the first thing that i came up with was the upbeat kick that just goes through the whole song i laid that out first then started singing and then like just like did everything what, what the f i i laid everything after that and like you know the end result is like it's quite decent, in my opinion. It has this kind of like, f kind of like, upbeat, quirky tonality to it, while like, it is talking about depression. Specifically relating to that specific feeling of like, uh, unpacking, figuratively unpacking your emotions while like, listening to like, depressing music. You know, very fun song! Again, one of those songs where I just like, kind of like, came up with a name, and then I just like, started working on the, th the whole song it's one of my personal favorites out of bunch <laughs> so
So the idea for the song Boomer came from the fact that I've been watching a lot of Pagefire and they have this series where they like teach how to make a song with thing like these like random like underground like alternative music genres. Like they are funny, they are really funny, but at the same time very edu educational and those videos have introduced me to a lot of new music that I really do like. For example, post-punk, uh, horror punk, a lot of punk. Uh, murder folk and like, well, the, the genre that I took inspiration to this song, um, folk punk. It's basically punk music made with acoustic instruments. So I took that, took my acoustic guitar, this motherfucker right here, you know, started strumming it, like playing with like power chords and just like came up with like this like very punkish uh, tone. I recorded that, I threw in some basic ass like punk beat. So... I just came up with like random fucking lyrics, some random ass fucking r lyrics, repeated that over and over again, and, and boom, that, that's how Boomer was made. I'm the fuck you America. Voice crack. Uh, fuck you America was, well, again, I came up with an epic flow. I'm the feminist Eminem dropping bars like God oh, with the flow as fast as fucking race car. Let me tell you a story about the American glory that is brutal and gory and fucking problematic. I can came up with that. Then I was like, I could make a song about roasting fucking America because like, why, why the fuck not? And I discuss about some some topics that I genuinely want to say fuck you to. Like for example, the fact that like America presents itself as the land of the free and the like the perfect place to live and like the best place to live and everybody is happy and like fucking all that. Um, meanwhile. It is really, I'm not saying it's the shittiest place to live on earth, but it's like, it contains some of the worst places to live on, on earth. It's the land of the, quote unquote, land of the free, as long as you have money. Um, there's a big hate on immigrants and there are places that are not too accepting of certain things. And the laws can be a little shady. For example, um, you're not allowed to buy alcohol or drink it before the age of 21, but you can buy a fucking gun at the age of 16. Like, as a European, that just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Firstly, the alcohol thing, but like, but mainly the fact that like, you can buy a life-threatening object that you can kill another person with five years before you can even drink. What the fuck? Also, uh, about half of the song I spent on like, um, roasting the fucking right wing. Being the gay liberal as I am, fuck you and your patriotism, and fuck you and your racism. And then, then I briefly become a, a NWA and say fuck the police. And then uh, there's that one quick part the where I go meta and say like fuck the words I say because they don't make any sense. Because you know what, I'm a fucking genius. There, there's a beat switch. Um, and then there's the. Oh, part of the song where I just like claim I'm gonna fuck their sons. I'm gonna fuck their sons and shoot their dads for being homophobic. Again, again, don't take the album too seriously. What I'm really happy about the song is the, how the flow turned out. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a master rapper. In fact, as I state in uh, 333, I'm not a rapper. But I'm quite happy how the flow turned out on this song. Edit. Like, I genuinely have a flow that works, and it's like, I'm literally saying something. I am, again, saying something rather than being like, I'm saying shit like, I'm a lyrical spiritual individual. I got rhymes like dimes, like polizai fucking wives type, you know. You get what I mean. So, yeah. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. Follow me. So, violence, originally titled Violence Like Beat, but apparently you're not allowed to release songs with the words like type beat on like any major streaming service. So, I had to change it into violence. It kind of pisses, pisses me off, but like it's not that big of a deal. This song is my take on the trap metal genre. You know, that uh, Scarlord, City Morgue, uh, fucking Lil Darky type 
sound. But basically, it's just like, you know, trap beats with some, like, very metal and punk-esque, like, energy. Um, with, like, all, like, screaming and sometimes even distorted guitars and all that Gucci. It is, it is a s satirical song um, about violence in media. Lyrically, the song is basically Fuck You America Part 2, although I made this song months before Fuck You America. So technically, Fuck You America is violence type beat part 2. Uh, <laughs> and like, before anyone gets like too confused, this song is not me promoting, um, before anyone gets too confused, this song is not me promoting violence, it's quite the contrary. Um, the lyrics are purposely shit, the lyrics are kind of like, um, kind of stupid in a sense, so that like, you as a listener could get a sense that okay, I'm not being serious, so probably the things that I'm saying are like, the opposite of what I'm saying, so surely someone will probably hear this and be like, oh my god, he's saying that Black Lives Matter encourages violence and he's encouraging us to be violent and, like, uh, beat up, like, po the police and all that. No, that's not, not what I'm saying. In, in fact, the, the bars where I s mention Black Lives Matter is, like, when I say violence is the only answer and Black Lives Matter, bitch. Like, I'm literally contradicting myself by say saying, like, violence is the only answer, and then promoting a movement that is very anti-violence. So, like, you know, see the contradiction there? It, like, it was done on purpose, I know. I mean, come on, lis listen to the fucking hook. Violence type beat, AJH on a kill streak. Fucking genius. Could it be more obvious that this song is a joke? It's not supposed, again, it is It is one of those songs alongside like Boomer and like Eagles and Cat Boys um, that you're not supposed to be taken too seriously. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this. Media, stop promoting violence. It's not fun, it's not cool, it's, yeah, no. gets too offended and starts shouting at me um yes i do say the words tranny fag on this track um now the reason why i can get away with it is because well one i am it two um i only call myself that and you know not even that i'm not being like self-hateful i'm actually referring to something that someone else had actually called me in real life and no, it wasn't that one person that I talked about in I, I Don't Fuck With Your Vibe, it was another person, a different person that I did not know. And it was, it happened in an unofficial school party, um, someone just like randomly, some very drunk guy just like randomly walked up, up to me and yelled like, oh, you fucking tranny fag. Not fun. And believe me or not, that did actually happen. So, 999, what is it about? Well, it's me just basically rambling about the shit that was, like, fucking with my brain at that one specific moment. Like, this song came to be when I was just, like, walking my dog, and again, just, like, randomly came up with a flow. The flow that I'm specifically talking about is, the like, the first verse, where, where I'm just, like, going, like, this is a confession, there's systematic oppression, their pressure is building up and feeding my depression, I have come from my successor and aware my body, and how I look, the fact that it took years to get comfortable, I still in my face, my voice, my walk, it hurts to stay, stay calm when your mental is an atom bomb, do you wanna know why I got these scars on my arm, so I'm mentally ill, and that's all that, I hate that, I have a dick, cause I am a man, and by the way, I was once referred to as a tranny fag. That was the first thing that like, I just like came up with and I was like, yeah, actually that works, I could use that as a, like a verse. You know, the inspiration for this track, like, sonically, was taken from like Wu-Tang Clan. I just like happened to listen to a lot of Wu-Tang at the moment and I was like, yeah, I want to do something like that. And, you know, not, 999 is what I came up with. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention while filming was that, um... Uh, the hook 999 pull it's I put your hands up it, it, it's time to die 999666 I must speak my mind you bitch 999 pull it's I put your hands up it's time to die 555666 what's it like to be a heretic the last part is a reference to heretic anthem by Slipknot it's one of my favorite Slipknot songs ever and you know you should go listen to it it's a fucking heavy song yeah moving on <laughs> I'm a woman 
2 is basically a transgender an anthem. Like, sonically, the inspiration for this track was taken from Kill Yourself Part 3 by Suicide Boys. In this song, I am promoting um, equality and saying that trans people are people to go trans rights and fuck you all who say otherwise. You know, the funniest thing about this track is that, like, I made this song, like, before I was out as non-binary. I, f I just made, made this track because I felt like I need to speak about this topic and then I then I ended up coming out as trans so like it's it fits even more and yes the song may be a bit too over dramatic with like the whole like sad piano ballad type like beat in the background and like you know it is what it is this song is like the most like serious song and the whole like album if I had to pick, pick a favorite child from the whole album, it would be I'm a Woman too. Because, like, it's, like, me at my most realist and most genuine, and it's, like, seri it's like serious and not, like, quirky, and I'm actually speaking about a, about a topic that, like, should be talked about, and there are things that should be changed. It is a very important topic for me and, like, people around me and like a lot of people that I do know, so. Mm -hmm. Last track, End. Um, End was a song that I made when I was like leaving Belgium and moving back to Finland. It's basically me just saying farewell to the people I knew in Belgium. Because very like strong emotions were involved um, when I was leaving, um, I decided to dedicate a song for it, and you know what, I thought the best way to end off an album would po probably be by saying, like, goodbye. Just like last time with, like, Air, where there's the whole, like, fall bracket, goodbye bracket song. It was fairly quickly made, but, you know, but, you know, I think it works. I think it's a good song. It is a good, like, ending track, so, you know, there's not much to add here. So, yeah. By the way, guys, I tried to do my bed, but that one motherfucker oh, the, didn't want to move. So, uh, <laughs> yo, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was a long video. It took a while to make. Please leave a like if you made it so far. Um, go stream the album. Um, subscribe for more content. And we will see in another video. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bye.